Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and this quick tip tutorial is going to explain Spriter's timeline. First we'll cover the basics here. Uh, this is the main timeline, and if you look over here you have your basic buttons to play, to skip ahead to the next keyframe, to go back to the previous keyframe, to go all the way to the end, and all the way to the beginning. And then you have the play speed, which is just the playback speed in Spriter itself. This does not affect how the animation will play in your game. But if you really want to meticulously um, look at and edit your animation, you can set its playback speed to be much slower. So that'll really allow you to very carefully analyze uh, what's going on in your animation or you could play it at very fast speed or even reverse speed. You can click here and then type in a number like 100% for example to bring it back. Uh, and then this tells you your overall uh, duration of the animation, the length of the animation. And by default, it, the Spriter's timeline works in fractions of a second, specifically thousandths of a second. By default, when you create a new blank Spriter animation, it defaults to taking exactly one second from the beginning to the end. So if you wanted something to happen, if you wanted a keyframe to take place at exactly halfway through, which would be one half of a second, you would just create your keyframe at the 500 mark. Or 500 thousandths of a second, which is obviously one half. Now the reason Spider by default works in fractions of a second instead of a any given frames per second setting is because frames per second is quite arbitrary these days when it comes to creating animations for games. Different people are going to have different platforms. Uh, let's say you're making a game for PCs. One person's PC might be able to handle only 30 frames per second for your game where someone else's might be running at well over 60 frames per second. The same exact thing happens with mobile devices, so it makes a lot more sense to create your animation based on actual time, actual fractions of a second, um, and then it will always play back as smoothly as possible for any given platform, but the actual timing of the animation is still exactly the same. But don't worry for those of you who learned how to animate with timelines that use specific frames per second style timing. There's actually a way to set up Spriter to work that exact same way, and I'll show you that momentarily. But before we get into that, let's just cover a few more of the basic aspects of uh, Spriter's timeline. And one thing is, once you have many objects in your canvas, you can actually, if you look here, you'll see how when I hover just above or at the top of the timeline palette, um, I get this orange line and my mouse pointer changes. Now I can click and drag upward to reveal the timelines for specific each specific object. And if I have a specific object selected, such as this bone here, it'll highlight. And if I just go anywhere in this area on the left hand side, this left column here that has the object names, if I right click, I can choose only show selected object. And now I have the main timeline and just below it, the timeline of that specific object that is selected. And another useful thing to know is this little icon here designates to the actual game you're going to be playing the animation in whether or not any particular animation should loop or not. This animation should not loop, but obviously something like swim. Typically, something like walk or anything like that would be a looping animation, so you can see it's turned on for that. So this doesn't affect playback in Spriter. It just tells the actual game data whether or not that particular animation is designed to play once or to loop continuously. Uh, when you're playing in Spriter with this play button by left clicking, it automatically will loop any animation so that you can just keep looking at your animation to perfect it. However, if you just want to see the animation play once and stop, you can right click on the play button and then it'll just play once and stop. Okay, now let's say you've created an animation but you've decided that the animation plays too slowly. 
Remember, this play speed only affects playback in Spryder, so you can preview things. It does not change the actual data for when the animation is in the game. To actually change the playback speed, you will change the duration of the animation. So if you actually click this button here, which is the total duration of the animation, you'll see you have some new options. And you can, let's say I need the animation to go twice as quickly. Obviously half of 1000 is 500. And then I would choose, I would make sure this little checkbox stretch keys is turned on. That way it will actually change the position of the keys so that the overall um, relative timing of all of the keyframes stays the same, but it's going to be compressed. And then I would choose apply length. And now you'll see the entire animation takes 500 thousandths of a second or a half a second instead of one full second but otherwise everything is the same. So that's how you would change the timing of your actual animation that will affect the game itself. Okay, let's say I'm creating a new animation and I sort of want to plan out where I want my keyframes and I know I'm going to want a keyframe at the halfway point. I can go to the halfway point in the timeline and I can select one of the objects that I know I want to be edited in that keyframe and then I can just click on the key selected button and that'll create a keyframe for that particular object at that point in the timeline. And now I'm going to explain to you how to change your spider timeline to use snapping and if you'd like to switch from a um, actual fractions of a second style timing system to a frames per second style. So if you look over here near the play button at the left of the timeline palette you'll see this little red um, magnet icon. If you click that, that'll toggle snapping on and off. So now you can move through your timeline at very speci specific intervals. And if you look carefully just to the right of that um, snapping icon, you'll see this little button with three dots. If you click that, this will bring up the dialog so that you can set all of your timeline snapping. Um, here's your snapping in interval, which is uh, by default at 100 milliseconds, but as you can see, you can set it based on frames per second. So, for example, I could set it to 24 frames per second, and as you can see, the ruler updates to match that. Um, and then you can set all animations to this interval if you'd like. Uh, you can also enable snapping uh, and to even lock the playback frame rate to the snapping interval. So if you click that, during playback in Spryder, it will actually reflect that particular frames per second. And then the ruler units, you can tell it if you want it to be in milliseconds or the actual snapping frames. So there you go. So now it's telling you how many frames instead of how many milliseconds. So now if I, I can click here to adjust that to be exactly within uh, 24 frames per second timing. And now anywhere I click and drag on this ruler is going to be at an exact uh, 24 frames per second interval. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching.